There is no restraint with God, whether to save by few or to save by many. Let us go over to the garrison. It may be that the Lord will work for us. Verse 6. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing restrains the Lord by saving by many or by few. Now, I need your help. Number one, you have to say, let's go and look at the problem. Let's face it. Before there can be a great awakening, there must be a root awakening. Now we're awake. Now we have to understand something. That God is not restrained by the size of his army, by the history of that army, by the condition of that army. The same God that caused the Zeusa Street is in Fresno, in the Wilson Theater, standing ready to pour out his spirit one more time. Somebody help me now. He's ready to pour out his spirit again. So why can't God use us? Why can't Jim Franklin, Bishop Steve Perea, and other leaders that are in this room, why can't we finally say, you know what? We accept God's offer to change California through our church. Shout, shout, shout. Do you know what cripples us? Is we try to figure out in our head, how is God going to do this? How is God going to do this? How is God going to do this? I remember the night that I decided to put up all of our chairs in a tent in Fresno. And I said, there's a pandemic going down. There's a shutdown. We're not going to get a fire permit. We're not going to get a city permit. I'm not even going to be able to renew my driver's license after this. <laughs> but the Lord said, why are you dwelling on... And I did a Zoom call every Monday night with our, our core. And I said to them, I feel like God is saying, keep going and don't think about it. Keep going and don't think about it. Don't think about what, how it'll happen. Don't think about where the money's going to come from. Don't think about that. Think about one thing. There is nothing restraining God from working with us and saving through us. There's no reason. In, all I need to know is, are you with me? All I need to know. So they went out and hid behind a rock. And Jonathan said, I'm going to ask God for a sign. And he says this. Then Jonathan in verse 8 said, very well, let's cross over to these men, one million of them. And we will show them ourselves to them. And if they say to us thus, wait till we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and not go out to them. Verse 10, but if they say thus, come up to us, then we shall go up for the Lord has delivered them into our hands. And this will be a sign for us. Hold the phone. Give me a break. Wait a minute. Stop. You mean to tell me if they say, stay where you are, you'll know that today is not the day. But it's, the day is coming, but it's just not today. But if they say to you, come over here, you're going to assume that you can attack one million men? How many of you would ask for a little bit more? How about an angel with a skywriting tool <laughs> saying, Mario, go and do it? They got none of that. Jonathan said, this is all I need. If they say stay here, we stay here. If they say come to us, we'll know that God delivered him into our hand. You know how many swords? You have two soldiers, one sword. You're not helping me enough. You got two soldiers, you got one sword. They got to kill somebody just to be fully armed. So here's what happened. They hid behind the rock. You're not helping me enough. They hid behind the rock. They got up. They made a face at him. They looked at him. And Jonathan waited. And they said, come on over here. 
and he grabbed his armor bearer and said, we won, we won, we won. You know what God is trying to tell you? You already have the tools. You already have the gifts. You don't need a gigantic sign. You don't need a 10-point blueprint for revival. You just need to let God know I'm going out to the front line. I'm going to tell the devil I'm there, and I'm going to wait on God's timing. And when God says go, I'm going to go. I don't care how impossible it looks. You can go to verse 13 with me. And Jonathan climbed up on his hands and knees and his armor bearer after him. But let's look at what he said before that. Let's look at the previous verse. Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come after me for the Lord has delivered them into the hand of Israel. How's that possible? The armor bearer said, he said, well, you take half a million and I'll take half a million and we'll surround them. So Jonathan climbed up on his hands, and his armor bearer was after him. And you know what happened? The first wave was Jonathan killing somebody, throwing a sword to his associate, the armor bearer, and within seconds, 24 men were dead. And the Bible says... that there was a trembling in the camp. I'm gonna tell you about that trembling. There's an old movie out, came out a hundred years ago, Rocky III, talking about the eye of the tiger. How many of you remember it? You remember it? And Apollo Creed was telling him, you know, when, when I fought you, you had that look. I didn't have it, you had that look. Well, if the eye of the tiger is something what does the eye of the Lion of Judah look like? How many of you wish more preachers had that look in their eye? How many of you wish more Christians had the eye of the Lion of Judah? So this is how it went down. Jonathan jumps over the rock. He attacks 20 men within half an acre. They're dead. He throws a sword to his associate, and they blindly begin to charge the rest of them in 1,000 quadrants of 1,000 men. Now, somebody in that crowd looked at him, and they were old, and they were old enough, and he grabbed the young men, and he said, Look at the look in their eyes. Because God is with them. The, the Ark of the Covenant is with them. The God, Lord God, Jehovah is with them. He's on them. He's in them. They're not fighting according to man. I know that look. My granddaddy told me about that look. That was in David's eye. That was in the eye of Moses when he looked at Pharaoh and he commanded the people to be let go. Come on, somebody help me preach right here. Jesus. You know what I love? I got to tell you, I love this part. It's when that old Jewish man is running for his life up over the bluff to run the war in the the rest of them. Just give them an alert, a warning. He runs up and he yells, run for your life. There are two of them. If two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And whatsoever you ask and confess, you will receive. <laughs> 